Thank you everyone for coming tonight. My name is Unity Laws. Throughout the year, we've had the opportunity to learn in depth about music, social justice, Draylon Mason, and ourselves. As a result of each of our own individual experiences and the climate of today's society, we choose to address gun violence and police brutality, which led to our theme, We Choose Music, Not Violence. Our capstone performance depicts a spectrum of emotions felt by those victimized by these injustices. We don't have all the answers, and we can't solve things overnight. But after working together throughout the year and being here tonight with all of you, here with all of you, we are hopeful for the future and motivated to keep, our, keep using our art to create change. <laughs> tonight, I will be playing a piece called Crime and Punishment. Music has always been a powerful tool for expressing the struggles and challenges faced by individuals and communities. When it, and it has often been used to shed light on social injustices. The composer Akira Senju has created a powerful piece of music called Crime and Punishment that addresses these issues. Through this piece, he provides a musical commentary on the destructive cycle of violence and the need for accountability and justice. But music is not only a tool for raising awareness, it is also a tool for healing and building communities. Through music, we can bring people together, inspire hope and unity, and face of adversity. Whether it's through concerts or festivals or community events, music has the power to bring people together and inspire positive change. As we confront issues of gun violence and police brutality, it is important to recognize the critical role that music plays in society today. From raising awareness to inspiring action, music has the power to create a better world for all of us. Let us come together, work towards a better future that provides pride prioritizes justice, equality, and peace for all. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining us tonight as we once more honor the passing of Draylon Mason. 
My name is Angel Carizales. I am a classical guitarist going on to my senior year of high school. Now to commence, we're all familiar with this idea that music is a language, correct? Depending on the different genre that I play or the different tone that I decide to use, I inevitably convey some sort of emotion onto the audience. And it is through that emotion that you're able to feel what I feel in the moment. Which leads me on to a quote that I'd like to introduce to you all, a popular quote in the music industry. When words fail, music speaks. Now, what does that mean to you? I'll tell you what it means to me. For me, it means that though often our words are shut down by those who oppress us, our music still stands. And it stands because unlike words, music holds a deeper sentimental value from the artist on to the audience. One that's abstract, one that is a lot harder to understand, but what's un once understood, it brings peace and tranquility to the world. Today for you all, I have one of the first classical guitar solos that I've ever learned, Snowflight by Andrew York. And I chose this piece because though it may not have a direct connection with police brutality or gun violence, it has a direct connection to me and how I observe these sorts of violences in society. It's built with all sorts of dynamics, crescendo, decrescendo, it goes fast, slow, soft, loud, and it's that roller coaster of emotions that really help you understand the roller coaster of situations that happen with the world. Thank you. are doing well. Um, my name is Michael Chong. I am a ninth grade homeschool student. I am a classical pianist, violinist, and adrenaline music fellow. Uh, so today I will present a beautiful classical piece called Preludian in Allegro, composed by Fritz Chrysler. I love classical music for the notes on the page. Through DNFP, I have learned to look beyond the notes for meaning and how we can use our art to address issues of importance in our society. The piece begins with an intense and dramatic tone. That to me symbolizes the fear and harsh reality of today's world. It then transitions into a melancholic phrase. 
reflecting the somber aftermath of violence and injustice. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you. 
everyone. My name is Ileana Martinez Yanez, and I'm a Jalen Mason Fellow. Okay. Sorry, the, the noise, it's like still, it's still ringing. Okay. <laughs> okay. During this era, this time period in which everything that happens can easily reach the ears of people 10, 100, 1,000 miles away, we are exposed to a mass amount of information that often hurts to hear, but we cannot avoid it. We are plagued with this information, and it stays with us whether we want it to or not. We hear about deaths of people from all age groups and of what caused it. There is often a common consensus about what needs to be done to spare families the pain that has been inflicted on hundreds already. But sometimes, actually, a lot of times, the change we need to see does not come. Something or another will stand in the way, and thousands will be left to grieve the freedom that they've yet to receive. To be able to get by after seeing the violence that's not yet been eradicated in our world is a demanding undertaking, but somehow, millions do it daily. We say goodbye to a lot of things, to those lost, to the shock and overwhelming sympathy we sometimes can't help but feel, to the hope for a different life, but it is in the toughest of times that we can also say goodbye to feeling sorry for ourselves. Goodbye to accepting the years of hurt that have passed and those we'd otherwise wait to occur. And goodbye to forgetting. To heal is a journey long and tiresome, with its moments of triumph and those where we seem to be at a standstill. Sergio Assad's piece, Farewell, expresses this in a way we sometimes can't, and that I think. Some of us have been impacted more by lack of regulation and efforts to create a healthier way of life, but we all have a duty to ourselves to acknowledge who we are, what we need, and what we will do for that, so that we can someday look back and know we gave our world what we needed and what we could. Thank you.
Harris Martinez, and the song I'll be playing today is The Change Is Gonna Come by Sam Cooke. This song was written in 1963, and it was meant to encourage the civil rights movement. Throughout the song, you hear him repeat, A Change Is Gonna Come, which represents the hope he and other people had for racial progress. Police brutality has been around long before the civil rights movement, and to this day, we continue protesting against it. It is very easy to lose hope after years of having little to no improvement. So this song is meant to inspire people to keep trying for a change until the day comes where we no longer need to. the double bass and I'm also Jerry the Mason fellow. The piece that I'll be performing for you all today is called Pumped Up Kicks written by Foster the People. The song was, was written to bring awareness to mental health and school shootings. School shootings and any shooting in general is starting to become a trend in America. It's unfortunate but it's the truth. However, despite it being a serious problem, a dangerous problem, 
The government refuses to do anything about it. Instead, they want to target minority groups and take away the rights that they fought for so long and so hard for, for their place in America. I want to play this song for you today, remind you of all the beautiful people we have lost due to this horrific event. I'm truly sorry that America has failed you.
Uh, my name is Elif Pinek, and I'm a senior in DMFP, and tonight I'll be playing Ballad in C minor by Samuel Coleridge Taylor. In the classical world, far too often we focus on white Western composers. Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, Vivaldi, they all produced great art, but we tend to ignore those who don't come from a handful of countries in Western Europe. And in terms of great composers from areas outside of Western Europe, Samuel Coleridge Taylor is a shining example. Born to a West African father and an English mother, he was a key member of both British and American civil rights movement and conveyed the values in his music that we echo here today. As you listen to this piece, keep an ear out for the mournful beginning and then a slow transition into a more hopeful and uplifted sound, akin to both the mourning for all those who have lost their lives to hate, gun violence, and racism, and also the hope we all have for the future. I'll leave you now with a line from a poem written by Taylor himself. Now from bondage free, may God our strength, your motto, and your hope forever be.
Good evening, folks. How y'all doing? That's good. Man, it's been it's been a heck of a night. It's crazy. <laughs> From the start, and hey, we we gonna keep doing our thing. But um, my name is Elijah Jones. I am a senior. I am also a fellow, and um, I want to share a couple of words with y'all before I play my piece. Um, <laughs> From a person who has experienced police brutality most of his life, I just wanted to leave these couple encouraging words. I am nothing but one voice, but the more we speak out, the more we will fight for our understanding, our freedom, our peace, and our just peace and tranquility. Um, the more that we learn and the more that we just keep fighting for our freedom and for our rights, we can really put an end to the undertaking of law enforcement, really. Most of the time, people feel afraid or hesitant to rely on law enforcement because of their undertaking and some of the things that they've done to us. But so I say, let us speak for the freedom that we deserve. So I say, let us speak for the peace and tranquil uh, tranquility that we need. So I say, protect us and not harm us. And with, <laughs> and with that, I am going to be playing my piece, Lift Every Voice and Sing. so much for listening. Um, so my next piece, I'll be playing Prelude in G Minor by the famous composer Sergio Rachmaninoff. To me, this work demonstrates energy and expressive power that I think resembles the rallying of the protesters against violence and inequalities in our society. The end of this piece illustrates a triumph of equality that we hope to see in our lifetime. We should all be equally respected despite our race and bravely say no to police brutality and violence. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this piece and have something to reflect on. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Hermes Camacho. I'm one of the directors here at Austin Soundwaves and I cannot... Uh, 
I'm glad I have some fans uh, in the room today. And, you know, I can't believe I have to follow all of that, all of our amazing fellows. Can we give them one more round of applause? It's an amazing, uh, amazing thing to see what the fellows have been doing this year, what the fellows have been doing these past five years. And I had the pleasure of knowing Draylen since 2012 as his orchestra director, as his mariachi director, as his band director. And I'll, let me explain how that happened as a bassist, because he would, he would show up to our band uh, during periods in which he didn't have band. And because he would charm the socks off of his teachers at EA Prep, they, they know this very well. And he would charm us into saying, yeah, sure, you can stay. It's, it's not a problem. And because he just loved playing music, he loved being a part of that. And it was just great being around Draylen. Um, there's a multitude of stories I could tell you about Dre and, and all the different things that he did, the shenanigans and, and all the ups and downs, but there is one story that sticks in my mind um, that I think exemplifies a lot of what Draylen, uh, Draylen is, Draylen was to all of us. And in 2014, uh, he had just finished eighth grade and I had the opportunity to take three of our Soundwave students to Sacramento. Uh, I conduct with the Sacramento Youth Symphony out in California every summer, and Dre was among those who I thought yeah, this would be a really great opportunity to do so. And so one of the things that we did was a, f a fundraiser, just to make sure that that trip uh, could happen at a high level and, and all of those different things. And so we recorded the videos, and we were asking, asking them all you know, their dreams for the future, what they want to do, why they love music. And we got to the question of, what do you want to be when you grow up? And Dre's, Dre's answer was, I want to be a dentist. I'm like, okay, all right, that sounds great. And I'm about to s stop the player. And he's like, oh, and also I want to be a neurosurgeon. I said, okay, all right, let's see where this is going. Uh, and then he also said he wanted to play principal bass for the New York Philharmonic. It's like, that's a heck of a commute uh, between the two <laughs> things. And then he also said he wanted to be on Broadway. It was his name lights up. And, and so I sat back and all I could say was, is that all? Is that all? Is that all? And he said, that's, that's more than enough for right now. And, and I remember going through all of this and he pulls me aside afterwards because I think I had a look of bewilderment, surprise, amazement, maybe a little bit of concern about the number of different things that he had said. But the main thing, he, he pulls me aside. And for those of you who know, know Dre, this is how he does it. He pulls me aside. Camacho, what's wrong? Oh, not, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. It's, it's great. It's like, it's just a lot of stuff, don't you think? That's, that's, that's at least five degrees and, and, and maybe 20 years in school, like sort of thing. And he said, Camacho, you got to dream big. <laughs> and I said, obviously, he was correct. You have to dream big. And he was, in, he was going into ninth grade and dreaming big was the thing to do and is the thing that we should all encourage our students to do. But I, I took away from that a couple of different things. That he is, he is never going to let anything get in his way. And it was the kind of, for all of us who got to know him, he is a leap first, head first, feet first, eyes wide open kind of person to go in there. It was never just doing what was the easy thing, it was always doing the right thing, no matter how hard it was. And he, he never dreamt, he doesn't know how to dream small, if that's even possible. He knows how to, you know, if I gave him an inch, he took three miles for anything we did in orchestra. One of the things he said is like, let's play Mahler. I said, let's, let's take it easy just a little bit. Mahler's a little big, maybe we can creep up to that. But he always asked and he always pushed. You know, one of the things that I, I always remember is that he said that we said no to him a lot. You know, that's, I said that can't be true because we said yes to him a lot also. And I think the proportion of yes to no was so high and that he got so many yeses that it just, it, it, it actually was more yeses. But he asked so much that it just felt like there were so many no's in, in the middle of all of that. But he never, he always took chances and he always wanted the best from all of us. And so the, the biggest thing I take out of that is, is this idea of dreaming big, okay? Always looking toward the, to the stars because if, even if you fall short, you'll hit the moon sort of thing. And what I want all of us here, these amazing fellows, all of us here who are celebrating Draylen's legacy, cut way too short. 
And if he was here, he would say, five years in, why aren't we in New York? Why aren't we traveling internationally? <laughs> okay? Little steps will, get, will, get, will go a long way, but I think we can, we can do so much more, and we will continue to push uh, to do so much more. Mishamika, thank you so much, and to Draylon's family, thank you so much for giving us this awesome responsibility. We're so honored and humbled to have this opportunity to, to be a small part of what his legacy should have been. And so it means a lot to us to see these fellows. I hope you guys understand why we put you through everything that we put you through at the year, because we owe it to him. We owe it to Dre, we all, everybody in this room, we owe it to Dre to, to realize as much as we can what that dream is. So I invite everybody here to, in whatever ways you can, with your time, with your energy, with donations, with whatever resources you think will continue to uplift that legacy. I wanna invite you to be part of this family, to be part of Draylon's legacy, and to dream big with us. So I just, I hope you have a chance to talk with us afterwards. Join us for this light reception that we have prepared. Find out a little bit more about the work. And yes, you get to talk to all the fellows because they will all talk, talk your ears off about how wonderful this program has been throughout this year. But thank you from the bottom of my heart to everybody here, to the fellows, to Draylon's family, and for this chance to just keep dreaming big. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome the fellows up onto the stage for one last piece. Thank you so much. last piece, a group piece, will be playing Fragile by Sting and the Police. It was originally written as a tribute to Ben Linder, an American who was violently killed by a rebel group funded and supported by the American government and the Reagan administration. This draws parallels to Sting's lyrics, which remind us of the fragility of our lives and how easily it can all be lost. His words paint a vivid picture of how delicate life is. In the wake of the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Draylon Mason, and countless others, Musicians like Sting use their platform to provide a voice for those who have been silenced and marginalized. It calls for an end to violence and oppression that too many communities face on a daily basis. We, we choose music, music not, not violence. violence. All right, can we give these fellows another round of applause? Hello everyone, my name is Trayvon Brown. I am the program manager here at Austin Soundwaves and throughout the year I've had such an amazing experience working with each and one of these uh, fellows here. They're such amazing musicians and high school students, all of whom are just in high school. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Uh, but before we get into this very last piece, uh, we'd like to just acknowledge a few people here on the stage. Uh, we have Matthew Gustafson, our lead uh, low string TA uh, on cello. We have Patrick Slevin, our wonderful executive director uh, on percussion. We have Sherelle Prince, an Austin Soundwaves alumna and friend of Draylin's, joining us tonight on Shaker. We have Cameron Mwalwanda. I practiced that. <laughs> uh, she is also a Draylin Mason uh, Fellows Program alumnus, and she will be joining us tonight as our lead vocalist. And last but not least, uh, we have, well, not last, uh, and not least either. <laughs> uh, we have Jay Un, who was collaborating uh, with us on this event here. If you could just wave uh, Jay Un wherever you are, somewhere around. Yeah, there in the back. And I'd just like to thank Austin Soundwaves, KMFA, Draylon's family, of course, and uh, all of you that are here tonight. And uh, 
I'm not a conductor, so uh, go easy on me, all you conductors out there. But uh, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna get this thing rolling. on it. 